on everyone's near again and did you guys see that counter knife i didn't even know that was a part of the game the guy came at me he tried to knife me gave me the ability to counter knife him how awesome was that i, don't, I just thought that was pretty cool i think I, after like going back and thinking about it i feel as though in battlefield if you try and knife somebody from the front in my past experiences at least with battlefield 3 I think it actually takes three knives or two knives or something to kill the guy, whereas it takes one if you knife them from behind. So I think now if the guy tries to knife you from in front, like face to face, it gives you kind of a knife battle. Instead of having to knife the guy three times, uh, you get a little knife battle, and apparently I won it. I thought that was pretty awesome, but welcome to this week's episode of Dear Nero, a weekly series here on my channel where you guys send me in fan mail and or fan questions. For the gameplay this week, we're going to be doing Battlefield 4. I like Battlefield 4. I'm actually enjoying this game a lot. I've been playing mainly only Battlefield 4 for the past couple days or so. So we're playing on this map. I don't know the name of it. And uh, we're using the M416 in the Assault Package. And this gameplay is freaking nuts. And right here, the guy like, drives up. I'm like, fine, I'll take your tank. And I end up getting that kill. And I'm like, this is awesome. I found a tank. Why did he give me a tank? I don't know. But if I remember right, they might blow me up. Because I'm already past like halfway down on my tank's health. So either way. Gameplay aside, it's, oh, by the way, it's a really, really awesome gameplay. Some clutch stuff happens in this gameplay. It's really good. I like it. And uh, there are tons of questions sent in for this week's episode of Dear Nero. So many so um, that I might have to run over this initial gameplay. Might have to. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I'll just throw in more gameplay if I run out of time. So we're just going to hop into these with the first question. And he's going to write, Dear Nero. In your earlier videos, you said that you can run Borderlands 2 on Ultra settings, and I was wondering what graphics card do you have, and if you have any tips for a good one, a simple response would be great. Ludwig from Sweden! <laughs> well, why did I make this the first question? I am tech-tarded. I cannot begin to tell you what graphics card are better or not. All I know is I have a GTX G4 660, and... Um, I don't know, in my experience, that runs just about every game that I've played so far on Ultra settings. So, um, that's why I got it. I've got it, like, Best Buy. But I don't really know anything, like, give any tips or anything as to what a good graphics card would be. The only thing I can recommend is this is the graphics card I use and it works out for me. Now, whether or not you should buy it, like I said in other videos, I don't like to recommend that one person goes out and spends a retarded amount of money just because one person said something. Do your research. Um, if you find that the 660 is something that you would want, then go for it. But PCs are they're a difficult thing. People don't understand what is good in a PC, and myself included. I have no idea. You know, a lot of times when people want to start getting into PC gaming, they will just go like Best Buy and say, Hey, can I get a good PC for gaming? And they'll just buy whatever the person says because everyone is so clueless when they first start getting into PC gaming and the inner workings of a computer that they'll just say what do whatever people tell them to do. And that's a bad thing. So do your research, but I do have a GTX GeForce 660, and I like it. It works a lot, and I've had no issues. Next question. This is a longer one, so I'm going to have to look at it really closely. He writes, Dear Nier, my name is, and he requested that I did not uh, reveal his name, and I'm currently going to college. I'm really big into gaming, and I've recently been purchasing new things for gaming, such as a headset, game freaks, and etc. Anyway, my mother commented on how she doesn't like me spending my money on gaming stuff, and she thinks it's a waste of money. It's not like I'm struggling for money. I have plenty of money from working. She doesn't understand what gaming does for me. I've had depression since I was a sophomore in high school, and it really comes and goes. When it comes, it really kills, but one of the best relievers is gaming. I love gaming with my friends, and it's just a good escape. I don't, it doesn't affect my schoolwork at all, and I really don't see how it would be a waste of money. How do I tell my mom about this, and I don't want her thinking that I'm wasting everything? Uh, PM back would be nice or if using your video. Thank you and keep up the awesome videos. I love them It's a guy who neglect. Oh, well, you left your name, but you told me not to let people know it um, Okay, so I had like kind of a similar story in terms of people thinking like you're wasting your money now My mom's always like super supportive of gaming see one of the things about gaming is that you are you're, you're home, you know, you're home here in your room or your living room or your basement or wherever it is you play games and that's what you're doing. You're not doing anything wrong, okay? There's lots of, like, family drama within my family. Not my, like, uh, uh, what's the phrase for, like, your mom and brother and stuff? No, not them, but, like, cousins, uh, aunts, uncles and stuff. There's lots of drama going on in the family. Like, oh, it's this and this and that and the other. There's never any Nero drama, right? There's never any of my brother drama. We're, we just kind of chill home and play video games. 
Whereas everyone else is always getting into trouble, or they're always, you know, starting drama with each other. There's always, like, a big fiasco. You never hear any drama related to me. It just doesn't happen, because I spend my time gaming. It's a good thing. It's a constructive thing. Uh, like you said, uh, people that are battling depression, or they're battling just other random things, you know, in the real world, gaming is an amazing release for that. Uh, gaming is a great escape for that. You can just enter this world, or wherever it is you're playing, and you can do that. You're not hurting anybody. Um... It's just a good thing overall. I don't understand uh, why some people feel so it's a waste of money. What's funny, though, and I don't know your situation personally, but I can imagine your mom's the kind of person that watches TV probably 10 hours a day or sits on Facebook five hours a day. There's this funny picture I saw. It's uh, the annoying Facebook girl, the meme, and she's like, oh, my God, you play Call of Duty for two hours every day? Get a life. And at the bottom, it's like spends five hours a day on Facebook. That's what people do. You know, for whatever reason, gaming is looked down upon as if it's some kind of, like, derogatory thing. It, it's weird. I don't understand why it's like that. But it is. Video games still, for whatever reason, seems to be this kind of thing that people look down upon. And I don't know why. Gaming's awesome. It's a good thing. Next question, he writes. Dear Nier, I've always had this problem with my speech. Nothing actually physically wrong, but it would always mess up my words multiple times. Lately, I've been beatboxing a lot, and it seemed to have helped me a lot, actually. And since I know you have a speech impediment, I was wondering, have you ever tried to do anything to help with that, or do you plan to do so in the future? Steven from Ohio. So, Steven, I've talked about this once before, and it might have been so long ago that not a lot of people that are still watching my videos um, can remember me saying this, but oh, there, are, there are some, and one of the, one of the questions coming up here uh, relates to that. So, I might have a speech impediment i don't know um, i'm tongue tied that's basically it so a lot of you guys that can picture this you stick your tongue stick your tongue out of your mouth right now do it while you're watching the video i don't care who else is in the room you do it you stick your tongue out right now okay your tongue's out good notice how your tongue actually comes out of your mouth mine doesn't <laughs> okay so the tip of your tongue there's like a little cord thing or whatever and mine's like tied or something they call it tongue tied whereas i can't get the tip of my tongue out of my mouth and that sometimes makes it so uh, when i say my s's that they, uh, they sound a bit different than what other people would say. Sometimes, you know, some days are better than others. Some days it's really noticeable, other times it's not. And I, for me, it's weird because, like, the days that it's noticeable, you know, freaking 5 to 10, 15, sometimes my videos get 100, 500,000 views. Uh, those people get to hear that bad day. So it's kind of a tricky thing. Um, have I ever done anything about it? So the best thing that we could have done was when I was little, they could have actually just snipped that thing in the ball of my tongue. It would have gave me full control of my tongue and... Uh, would have been okay, but I would have to relearn how to talk, and that's what always kind of like scared us to do it. And I could still do it to this day, but once again, for the first time in my life, I would be able to get my tongue out of my mouth, and therefore I would actually have to relearn how to speak again. That wouldn't be a good thing. Uh, other than that, I did take speech therapy and stuff when I was in elementary school, and um, I don't know. I, I don't think it's too bad. I, I mean, I never had any complaints. Um, from women, I guess, with my tongue. I've never had any complaints really about my speech. So, except for, you know, five-year-olds on the internet. So, I, I think I'm okay, but I'm glad to hear that you found a way to uh, kind of remedy your own speech problems. I don't, <laughs> I couldn't think of what to say right there. But it is kind of nice that, you know, beatboxing, although I've never met anyone that beatboxed before, I think it's kind of cool that you found a way that will actually help you uh, with your own speech problems. Next question, he writes... Dear Nier, I'm one of those people that gets very angry when I play Xbox. One of the worst things I ever done was I broke my TV by punching it, and I've done that recently. I was wondering, do you have any issues like this, or have you have any tips to keep calm? And by the way, I already know about the time that you punched out your window and broke it, and <laughs> I still have a scar on your finger, if I'm correct. Anthony from Yorkshire. Yorkshire! So, I, um, I don't know, I'm kind of an angry person as well, Anthony, um, Gaming is one of the things that can definitely make you angry, but the thing of it is, like, you punched out your TV, and I threw my controller at my TV and broke it, and after that happened, now I'm much better with my things. I, I respect how much things cost, because I pay for things, and I don't want to go buy another, like, $400, $500 television. That sounds horrible. I don't want to go buy another Xbox One. That's $500. I don't want to go buy a new game. That's $60. You know, when I was younger, maybe it was, I don't know, it was a bad thing. It was definitely a temper thing. Like, um, I told a story before, which is what he referenced in the video, or in the, in the question, not the video. 
but uh, he referenced it. Back during Modern Warfare 2, we were losing a Capture the Flag match. And I don't know why, but I was just so infuriated with the fact that we were losing. And, you know, I just, like, did, like, a punch thing to my right, and the window, I was, like, sitting next to a window at the time, and my hand went clean through the window, and I still have a scar on my, on my finger. I'm actually looking at it right now. Um, yeah, that was silly. So, I don't know, it's, it's back, and when you're done with it, like, you can get so angry on the Xbox, you can get so angry, or gaming in general, not just the Xbox, but you can get so angry while playing video games, right? You just fucking, some guy's pissing you off, or you're, you're doing bad, and you just get mad, especially if you have a temper, you just get mad. But the beauty of it is, if you literally just get up and stop playing, five minutes later, you'll feel fine. That's how it is. So, uh, that's my recommendation to you. When you get angry, don't break stuff. Just stop playing video games. <laughs> That'll definitely help you out. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, First of all, congratulations on hitting 110,000 subscribers. I know you hate or dislike the PS4, but will you ever think about purchasing a PS4 in the future? Ramses from North Carolina. I get this question so freaking often. So, I do not see a point in having two consoles. I don't. Some people say to buy a PS4 so I can play with my PS4 fans. And it's like, well, that sounds nice, but I'm paying $500 to do open lobbies now and again. Really? That's, that's kind of silly. In reality, if I were to buy a PS4, it would be a Netflix player. And $400 for a Netflix player. I mean... That just sounds silly. So no, I'm not going to buy a PS4. I never have any intentions of buying a PS4. It's not that it's a bad system. It's just that I don't need one. I already have an Xbox One. So that's what I'm going to be using. Next question. He writes, Dear Nero, I've been a subscriber of yours for a while now. I love to watch your videos and watch every single one. I saw that you were doing Pokemon videos before, so I was wondering if maybe you could start a Pokemon Showdown series. Pokemon Showdown is a free game that you can play without downloading. It is a battle simulator, and you could battle maybe one or two subscribers a week and upload the battles. It would be a great series. And if you're unsure what you need to start making a team, please feel free to ask me. I'm sorry about this message being so long. But once again, I love your videos, and have a wonderful day. <laughs> this cat neglected to leave his name. I like the wonderful day party put in there. So, what... I know what Pokemon Showdown is, and I just recently learned, like, maybe two days ago. Uh, Wildcat invited me to a Skype call, we started chatting about YouTube and stuff, and then we started playing Pokemon. Because we both, um, we both have a 3DS, I'm actually grabbing it right now, we both bought Nintendo 3DSs uh, for Pokemon Black and, or Pokemon X and Y. And uh, we realized like there's like a new update or something that we have to do before we can even like battle each other on there. I'm like, ah, screw it. He's like, just go to Pokemon Showdown. And I'm like, oh, I don't know what that is. So I go to Pokemon Showdown and I realize basically you can take any Pokemon and give it any nature and give it any items and any moves, well, moves that are relative to it that you can actually learn. And it's a battle simulator of like who can have the best strategies. You know, you, you, it goes as far as to work on the EVs and the IVs of the Pokemon. So it's a really good battle simulator. But for me... I don't like Pokemon battling that much. For me, Pokemon's about playing the game, getting the Pokemon you want, having fun, beating the game. But these people, like, when I was facing Wildcat, which I did beat him once! I did beat him once. He beat me twice, but I beat him once. Um, it's, like, ridiculous the amount of moves there are now. There are thousands of moves now. Like, like we, we had to, I had to, like, make the rule when I was playing him. Like, hey, we need to only use Generation 1 Pokemon because I don't know any of these other ones. Like, when we were playing on uh, Pokemon X and Y, and we're battling each other on there. I didn't know who half the Pokemon he sent out were. And I couldn't tell what types they were. What they're strong against. What they're weak against. I have no idea who any of these things are. And they're using moves I've never heard of. Because mind you. Last time I was really into Pokemon was probably like Pokemon Silver. Back on the Game Boy Advance or Color. I think it was Game Boy Color. Right? It was a long time ago. When I played Pokemon. So I don't know any of these new things. I don't know any of these strategies. I, don't, I just don't know. And it's a lot to learn. And so I don't. I mean, if I were to do, like, a battle simulator thing, I would, like, do... I'd play with people now and again, and it would basically be Generation 1 Pokemon only, only with Generation 1 moves only. And Generation 1 everything only. Uh, because I don't know any of the other things. Next question, he writes, Dear Nier, I see that you used to play and upload custom zombies quite frequently. Did you stop playing custom zombies, or did you just stop uploading for whatever reason? Robert from England. So you're right about custom zombies. I did stop playing it, um... I don't know, we played through a bunch of different maps, and Custom Zombies, if you guys aren't aware, it's Call of Duty World at War. 
on the PC, and people have modded it so they can make their own zombie maps, and it's pretty neat. They can even mod in their own zombie weapons, so it was kind of a cool thing. I've talked about it uh, back when I was uploading custom zombies. It's like having a new zombie map pack every day, because there's so many out there. But we played like a ton of them, and some of them were good, some of them were bad, but I just really don't like Call of Duty on the PC. I don't like first-person shooters, really, on the PC. Like, stuff where... Like, it's actually serious. Like, like when I try to play Call of Duty on PC, and I'm, like, running around dying a bunch, because I can't even freaking play the PC. I'm bad at it. I'm bad at, you know, like, the keyboard and mouse thing. But games like Skyrim, or games like Minecraft, or games like Borderlands 2, games where it's not a comp in a competitive sense, I love those games, because I don't need to be the greatest player in the world. I just need to play. And when I'm playing Zombies, I suck, and I end up dying a lot, <laughs> because I'm just bad at the PC. So that's the reason I stopped playing. That's why I haven't been uploading any custom zombies. Next question. He writes, Dear Nero. Nero, how do you do? But I wonder what is your favorite movie of all time and why? By the way, you're my favorite YouTuber. Why do people do this to me? Loi? Loi? Louie? From Washington. It's spelled L-O-I. I am so bad with names. My favorite movie of all time was probably one of the Boondock Saints. Boondock Saints 1 and or 2. They are a cult classic, which I recently learned what a cult classic is. A cult classic basically means it's an amazing movie, and the people that have seen it love it. But it has like this like following of so many people, almost like a cult. Like, it has this following of people that just absolutely love the movie and love the series of the Boondock Saints, but not a lot of people have seen them. Um, it stars... Oh, what is the one guy's name? I know the the, uh, the other star is Norman Reedus, who plays Daryl on The Walking Dead. I'm trying to remember the name of the other actor that plays his brother in the series. I can't remember. I can't remember. Maybe someone can write in the comments. But yeah, it stars those two. It's a really good movie series, and I highly recommend it. If I remember right, they're both on Netflix. Last time I checked, but that was a long time ago that I checked. So uh, check out Boondock Saints. It's a really good series of movies. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero. I've been thinking for a while what I would like to ask you, and I've seen many of your dear Nero's, so I finally have a question. What is the most difficult time in your life? If you feel uncomfortable answering this question, I can understand why. Anyway, hopefully you had a great Christmas and stay awesome. Torben? Torben? Yeah, Torben <laughs> from Germany. <laughs> I'm getting better at names, I think. Or Yeah, it's Torben because he says even that. I like when people help me out if they have an obscure name because it says Torben. T-H-O-R-B-E-N, Torben. But the H is silent. Let me know that's not Thorben. So I like that. I like that he's helping. Other people could take note with that. So the most difficult point in my life. Kind of a dark question I guess. But probably when my parents got divorced. I was going into 8th grade. And we all know how awkward of a time that is. And my parents got divorced. And I went to live with my mom. And I had to move into a new town. Into a new school. And that was weird. It was different. But yeah. it turned Everything turned out great though. Next question. He writes. Dear Nero, what do you think of the Xbox One controller? Have you ever tried Control Freaks? Do you have any animals? And what is your favorite color? Thank you for all the hard work you put into your videos. Keep putting out entertaining content. Jared from Michigan. Okay, so what are the questions again? What is my favorite? What do I think of the Xbox One controller? At first, I thought it was really small, but now I'm used to it. Now the Xbox 360 controller feels big because I'm so used to the Xbox One controller. Have you ever tried Control Freaks? No, I have not. Do I have any animals? I've owned a lot of animals throughout my life. I had a giant Great Pyrenees dog named Buford. We had a Rottweiler uh, named Ben. We had so freaking countless cats. A lot of them lived outside because we had like a barn out back and they like lived out there. But we had ton we've had tons of cats in my life with those two dogs those are the pets oh and i had a rat once i had a rat and i named him jason because he was like he was like he was all white and he had like this gray like a bunch of gray fur on his face like it was most of his fur was white with the exception of his face which was gray so it kind of looked like he was wearing a mask so i named him jason and it was funny because i bought him at a flea market of all places to buy a freaking rat but it was like a, tra I want to say it was a trained rat, but the rat was like sitting on the guy's shoulder. It seemed like a cool little animal. I'm like, this is awesome. I'm going to have this rat. Little did I know that you can't just take like a little fish aquarium thing that you would keep like your goldfish and just keep it in there. Because rats, once they get older, they can jump. And <laughs> there were people like weeks at a time that this rat was loose in my freaking room and I couldn't find it. So eventually uh, we took it down to Drake Well. And you guys may have heard of Drake. Well, it's where he discovered oil. I'm sure you guys may have uh, read about it maybe in your in your history books at school and whatnot. But yeah, that's in my town. And we went down there. We just kind of released it. It probably died. But, yeah, you know, it probably would have died in my house too because we have a couple cats. So, 
Yeah, I had a rat. Don't recommend getting a rat. Rats are not really the best pet in the world. <laughs> Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, Have you ever thought about streaming on Twitch? I know Machinima would rather you stream on YouTube, but I think you'd have more success streaming on Twitch. Keep up the great work. Congrats on 100k. Tyler from Florida. Have ever thought? I have thought the stream on Twitch before. I never have. I've uh, done a couple YouTube live streams, uh, mostly zombie stuff uh, here on YouTube. I do have a Twitch channel. It is uh, twitch.tv slash Cinema. And I randomly, I don't know why, but I have like 60-something followers on there. And I've never even, I don't even think mentioned my Twitch before. But um, that is my Twitch. I have one. I just never streamed on there. I'm just not really big into live streaming. It's, uh, once again, I am tech-tarded, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video. And I'm not very good at setting up that kind of stuff. And I don't know. I, I, I envision myself live streaming in the future. But at the same time, as I've, I've actually talked to Twitch about this, is that I have a 110,000 subscriber YouTube channel. You know, I'm up to like 17 million views or so. If I were to live stream here on YouTube, I would actually be paid to live stream here, which is a good thing. And Twitch, they do have a partner program. You can partner with them, run ads on your stuff, and you know, make semi-decent money live streaming on Twitch, which is why a lot of people stream on Twitch. And I'm saying thing like, I'm a 110,000 subscriber YouTube channel. I don't want to come over here and live stream for you, Twitch, for free. You know, uh, that makes sense to me, you know. But they don't care, <laughs> you know. They have, like, these prerequisite rules or whatever, and they basically just say, fuck you, Nero. Uh, you have to come here and, you know, build up a viewership and whatnot. And it's like, well, I can go over there and stream for you for a freaking month for free. Or I could stream on YouTube. And actually get paid for what I'm doing. So um, I picture live streaming to Twitch someday once Twitch actually offers me a partnership. That's basically my thing with Twitch and or live streaming. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, what happened to your gamer glove partnership? I know you I know a long time ago, like before Black Ops 2 came out, that you made a video talking about them. I haven't seen anything about it since. Just wondered what happened. Thanks, Zeke from Shoreline, Washington. So this is a perfect example of what not to do on YouTube. So well, my channel is like, uh, it wasn't pre-Modern Warfare 3. Yeah, it was pre-Black Ops 2, like he said in the thing. Uh, it was during Modern Warfare 3, as my channel was just starting to get some headway. So just starting to explode. I just got partnered with Machinima. And I'm like make, make, making headlines here with the, with the amount of views and all the videos I was posting. Especially like the Moab stuff that were just blowing up randomly. And um, I took that and I got like a semi partnership with gamer gloves which is the silliest thing in the world now i think about it. i think this might be loud i still have some they're sitting right here why did i think that these were a good idea <laughs> so essentially what gamer gloves are you can google these if you want to they are gloves that you put on your hand and they're nothing but normal gloves that take away all the feeling from your controller with the exception that your thumb is gripped and it is so silly at first, I kind of liked them, but then I'm like, I don't like these at all. And so, I made a video, like, the whole deal I had with Gamer Gloves was, hey, you know, we'll send you over, like, freaking, like, f four free pairs of Gamer Gloves. And we'll send you over a bunch to give away as well. And, basically, you get your gloves for free in exchange for promoting our service or product. And I did it. And that was silly of me because I don't like Gamer Gloves. I mean, I, I thought I'd like them. But I got, I made this deal with them that I would do all this stuff before I'd ever even purchased the product. I never, you know, it was silly of me to do that. So I don't want, ever want to do that again. That was a horrible example. And right after the little contract or whatever that they wrote up uh, expired, I took down that video and I've never really spoken of Gamer Gloves again. Because I was like, I just endorsed a product that I've never even used. And when I actually sent them to me, I realized I hated them. And so that's why I'll never do that again. There are a couple companies out there that I would I would endorse and I would work with because I actually use their product. Gamma Labs is an, ex is an example of that. I actually use Gamma Labs. You know, I like them. Uh, other than that, there's actually not a ton of companies out there. NVIDIA, maybe. I use their graphics card. Uh, Rode, I use their microphone. Um, I'm looking around my room here. I have Audio-Technica headphones. These things are amazing. I love these things. Other than that, there's not a whole lot of companies I work with. And I think it was just... It was a good example of learning here on YouTube that don't just endorse stuff. And, of course, this was like two or three years ago. But yeah, don't just endorse stuff because you have the opportunity to and someone's waving is waving some bells and whistles in front of you saying, hey, we'll give you some free stuff. 
if you endorse our product. It's like at the same time, it's like, I never tried your product. Why would I endorse it? And looking back on it now, it's like, that was the stupidest thing ever. Why did I do that? But I don't know. I guess uh, it is what it is. It's in the past and in history, and I definitely learned a valuable lesson. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, you mentioned back in your Modern Warfare 3 video, one respawn, a chance at life, that you were deathly afraid of flying, but your dream, or one of them, was to visit England, if I'm right. I just want to know, how are you going on this? Have you progressed in your fear, and do you think you ever visit England? Have you already, Marcus, from England? So, that's why I talked about earlier, earlier in the video. There are some people that have been around for freaking ever. And this, is, this was like a random, obscure video that you know didn't blow up. It, the point of the video was, one respawn, a chance at life. If you had the opportunity to basically respawn once in life, how would you use it? And um, that was the whole point of the video. It got like 4,000 views, which may be a lot to some of you, but that's like a normal video of mine that never really gained any attention after that. It just kind of, you know, it, people watch it in their sub box, and then it just kind of, the video just kind of died and stopped there. And he remembers this video. So I am definitely, I hate flying. I hate it. I've flown once in my life. I flew to Florida and back, and I live in Pennsylvania. And. <laughs> I hate flying. It's awful. And I do, like, want to go see England. I want to see Ireland, too. There's a lot of things, you know, because, you know, of course, you know, we all die someday. And there's a lot of things I'd like to do before I die. And one of them would be, like, maybe go see England, go see Ireland, go see freaking Russia, even though there are a bunch of bombings happening there right now. But to do any of that, I would need to fly, which, one, scares the piss out of me, and, two, fly over the ocean, which somehow is way worse to me. I don't know. I Have I made any headway on that? No. I haven't flown since. All I know is I still sit here every day going, I hate flying. It's awful. And I don't know. It, flying has just never been something I like. I don't like heights. I think there's definitely, I think there's a definite fear of heights in me somewhere. But, uh, you yeah, know, I haven't made any headway on that. I haven't. I do still want to visit England, but flying is still freaking scary. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, when did you start the game and why? Will you ever open a Minecraft server for your subs? Austin from Texas, keep up the good work. When did I first start gaming? Ah, uh, Sega Genesis. It was like Sonic the Hedgehog. Will I ever open a Minecraft server from your, for your subs? I did at one point. And it wasn't a very good server. <laughs> it was a survival server. And to help pay, it was like a 50-man server or 70-man server, somewhere in there, somewhere in that ballpark, 50, 70-man. It costs like $25 a month to run this server. And I'm like, okay, so just to make it so I'm not actually paying money for this, if you guys like to donate to the server, you can have creative mode and fly and all that fun stuff. And so a bunch of people donated, like $150 got donated um, into, into the Minecraft server. And... But then it just didn't like go anywhere. Then I just kind of like lost interest in Minecraft. And then it was like, huh. And so I basically, all that money that people donated, I'm like, okay, we're well, here. And I basically just paid for the server in advance. And it went on for like four, however many months it went on. And then the server shut down. I have re recently thought to make a new Minecraft server. Because for a while there, I was really into Minecraft. I was playing a lot of it. And, but yeah, but the idea of Minecraft is like, it's a really tricky thing and you really have to know what you're doing when you're making the server. So buying the server and setting up the server, that's really like two different things, right? So when you buy the server, it costs X amount of money or whatever, based on how many players you estimate are going to be in your server. And so we did that. We actually bought a server, Foxhound and I, and we started setting it up and we started building like a big spawn area and we started doing all that. And then we realized that if we want to have a good server... We're going to need stuff to do, not just a normal, boring old survival server. And so we started building, like, kit PvP maps. We're going to do some kit PvP stuff, which, of course, we're building the maps and stuff. But at the same time, we know little to nothing about actually putting in the coding to be able to make kit PvP work and be able to make the different classes and be able to do different donation ranks. And then we are like, okay, well, kit PvP is not working out. Let's try factions. And but the hard part about that is, like, when you first start a Minecraft server, because so many people that do play Minecraft, they're so dedicated to the server that they're already playing on, and the one that, you know, that they enjoy the most, and that they've already invested money into, it's hard to get people to come over to a new faction server. So for a while, if it were a factions-only server, it would be, like, five people playing factions, or probably more, probably 20 or 30 or whatever, but still it would not be a very good factions experience. And then we're like, okay, so we can have kit PvP factions and, and survival and maybe a creative world. And we're trying to like put this all together. And at the same time, Foxhound's like trying to watch tutorial videos and learn like <laughs> for the first time how to like put in the codes for this and be able to change around things. 
in terms of the coding of setting up all this stuff. Because you can't just say, okay, I want factions and click a button and there's automatically a factions portion of your server. It's different than that. It was a giant cluster and eventually we just kind of, that's one of the ideas that just kind of pooped out and we stopped paying for the server after one month. But that's what happened with that server. Uh, will I ever open up another one? Maybe somewhere down the line if I can, you know, figure out how to make one that works and it's actually good in a, in a place where people would actually like to play. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, do you still live with your parents? And if you do, is it because being a YouTuber doesn't pay enough for you to live by yourself or do you just like being at home? Austin from Washington. So a lot of people ask me this question. I do still live at home and it's weird because like you're 22 and you still live at home. Is it because you don't make enough money? On YouTube, I make very good money. I have, <laughs> I was just talking the other day about buying a house. And, and that sounds horrible, right? That sounds horrible. Like, oh, you're trying to buy a house, oh, oh, your YouTube money. But buying a house is a bit different. Like, when you buy a house, it's not, you're not buying a house outright. Like, I'm not, you know, putting $100,000 down on a house. And like, oh, it's mine now, paying cash. What well, YouTubers don't, well, at least I don't make that much money on YouTube. But buying a house in terms of, like, if you want, like, a $70,000 house, which where I live is a very nice house, all you need is, like, ten grand for a down payment. And then you just pay off uh, like a monthly thing. Like there's a house I was looking at. It's like a 20% down payment. It's actually 14 grand uh, for the down payment on the house, which is a lot. That's that's definitely a lot. 14 freaking grand. I'd actually probably I'd actually have to get a loan for part of that. But after that, it's paying like $400 a month for this house, and you pay it over the course of 15 or 20 years, or whatever, and you own the house. And so we're talking about that. The reason I have to live at home is. It's nice, you know, it, food is cooked, clothes are washed, bills are paid for, you know, I help out with stuff around here, but at the same time, it's like, I could move out, but it's tricky, because like, when you first move out, like, what a lot of people do when they first initially move out of their house, is they go to, say, like, uh, like an apartment complex. I can't do that. I, I, I can't. I'm loud when I make videos, and I can't have neighbors pounded on the wall. I can't have people... Uh, again, people on the other end of the wall being loud and showing up on my recordings. I can't live house like next to people in an apartment thing. It just can't happen. It won't happen. I would need to actually go and either rent a house or buy an actual house that is separate from the rest of the people. And while we and while we kind of wait for that, like I, I look around and stuff, but uh, of course, you know, in, in little tiny little Pennsylvania, there's not a whole lot of people. They're actually like buying and selling houses and there's not really a whole lot of places for rent. Basically, there's a bunch of apartment buildings. We call them chicken coops where people are just kind of stuck next to each other door to door. And it's just not a really good thing. So at the same time, it's like I could move out, but I kind of like it right now. And the, the opportunity that I have here is that I do make good money on YouTube and I enjoy doing YouTube. And I have the, an opportunity that not a lot of people have because a lot of people either get kicked out or they end up uh, just leaving as soon as they turn 18 or whatever. Is I've had this time to just kind of work, save up a ton of money, and be far better off when I actually do move out as compared to a lot of people who immediately have to go on food stamps, who immediately have to, you know, get, oh, what's the name of that thing that helps? There's a thing that you can apply for that helps you pay for your heat and stuff. And people have all these different things that they have to go through. When I actually, when I actually do move out, I'm going to have a bunch of money saved up. I'm not going to have to go on food stamps. Not that there's anything wrong with that. It's just that I'm going to be a lot better off and have a lot better of a start than a lot of people when they you know, move out the moment they graduate. And that's the reason I still uh, live at home. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, do you think the chem strike is meaningless in Call of Duty Ghost as even the worst players can get them from care packages, which takes away all the skill and luck involved in earning one like the nuke in past games, Jack from the UK? So Jack, I think you have it mixed up here. Only on the map Strike Zone can a Chem Strike actually show up uh, in a care package. Other than that, Chem Strikes are kind of a fun thing. One of the reasons I actually like Chem Strikes is that they're, they're, they're the kind of thing that gives a, a player that's played the game a lot. It gives that player an opportunity to continue playing. You know, when I started playing Modern Warfare 2 and I got myself a 10th Prestige or whatever, I was like, wow. What am I supposed to do now? Because I actually got into a mod lobby. And so now I have all the camos and I have all the guns and I'm um, 10th Prestige and whatnot. And, like, what do I do now? And it's like, oh, yeah, I can go for nukes and, you know, do stuff like that. Uh, during uh, Modern Warfare 3, as much as I didn't like that game, uh, Moabs were kind of a fun thing to go for. 
because they kind of give you something to do other than, you know, instead of just trying to play the game to win. You know, I play, I had a 17.0 win-loss ratio. Not .17, 17.0 win-loss ratio during Modern Warfare 3. And if you guys don't believe me, you can go on back to my uh, Modern Warfare 3 entering 10th Prestige video. Uh, my win-loss was above a 17. <laughs> and so we never lost. We never lost games. If we did, it's because the host dashboarded. Yeah, you know, we never lost. And so one of the things that made the game more interesting was going for Moabs and stuff while we were winning every single game we ever played. I think it's a good thing. I don't think it devalues it. Uh, the idea of it coming in a care package is silly, but you act like it's on every map, and which it's not. So, there's my opinions on the chem strikes. It's, uh, it's a fun thing to go for. Me, personally, I don't like to like, go for it. I just kind of let them happen. If I realize I'm on like, a 20 kill streak, I'm like, hey, I'm getting close to a chem strike. Let's try and get it. Then I go for it. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, what, what do you use to make your thumbnails for your videos? Because, frankly, I don't know how to make my own custom thumbnails. Thank you. And he neglected to leave his name, although I do believe it was Leviathan Gaming or Leviathan Gaming. Um, what I use to make my thumbnails, I use Sony Vegas 10, the editing, video editing software I make my videos in. A lot of people use, like, Photoshop. I don't want to learn how to use Photoshop. It took me forever to learn how to use Sony Vegas. So I use Sony Vegas and I either use the event pan crop to, to you know crop out a picture from a background for the thumbnail, or if you just Google like, let's say you know the COD Ghost mask, like the guy like slowly lifting up his mask. If you just type in COD Ghost in the Google Images, and then you go over to the image preferences, and you make the background transparent, you'll find a bunch of transparent backgrounds. You can save the picture, drag it right on top of the video file, and then that picture will just show up on top of there as if it were Photoshopped. It's really easy to do actually, and that's why I make all my stuff in Sony Vegas. Next and final question, he writes, Dear Nero, did you get a new microphone for commentating because your voice sounds cleaner in the videos? And if you did, what mic is it? Aaron from California. So Aaron from California, I see you did not watch my FAD chem strike on the map. I don't want to talk about my new microphone. I got the Rode Podcaster. It's a USB microphone. It's not XLR. Rather, it is USB. Apparently, XLR is not that hard to figure out. But at the same time, like I said twice in this video already, I am tech tarted. Therefore, I don't want to go ahead and like, try and figure out XLR. And plus, it's a lot more expensive for XLR. And I'm just like, screw it. I'll go USB. And it turns out pretty good. I like the Rode Podcaster. So I hope you guys all enjoyed this week's episode of Dear Nero. And if you did, remember to leave a rating where you guys feel the video deserves. And if you guys like to have your guys' questions featured on next week's episode of Dear Nero, send me a personal message here on YouTube. Make the title of the message Dear Nero. Keep in mind... That I got like freaking 10 pages worth of questions for Dear Nero this week, which was absurd. I can't keep doing, you know, these 30, 40 minute long Dear Nero's because it's going to stop being more. It would be become less of a Q&A and more of a podcast at that point if I have this many questions coming in. So it's, it was nuts. Either way, I hope you guys all enjoyed the video. And once again, if you guys like to send in your guys' questions for next week's Dear Nero, send me a personal message here on YouTube. Feel free and make tell the message Dear Nero if it's a good question, an entertaining question, and above all, a question I've not yet answered before. Because keep in mind, we're 70-something episodes here in the Dear Nero. I've answered a lot of questions in my time. But either way, I feel as though this episode's gone on long enough. My voice is starting to get hoarse. I can feel it. Hope you guys all enjoyed. Remember to leave a rating. Hope you guys all have a wonderful day. I was banging seven grand rocks as I roll. I got one gear go. Are you bipolar?